This is quite a upward angle, but hello. I guess I can take those off. Um, hi. I, I said in the last video I recorded, but I've just recorded so many start of videos and like opening intros to vlogs that I then haven't continued because I've been really bad at recording things and not wanting to take my camera out and just trying to experience things. I guess I just wanted to update you a little. I am working now. I have a part-time job in retail. It's happening. It's one of the best part-time jobs I've ever had. I'm actually making more than I did working in publishing part-time, which is funny. Still want something full-time. I want to find what I love and what I'm passionate about in a career, but I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what I, I'm not there yet. So that's kind of 2020's journey, hopefully. I've gotten a couple new plants. I'm looking at them now. Here's my like, this is the bedroom. This is like our jungle in the bedroom. We saw cats last night. We <laughs> brought a lot of alcohol in and watched cats and it was a grand old time. And everyone in the cinema was like on the same page that this, we were here to experience and we were very lively and uh, that was good. I was worried that there'd be people who were like, this is a very serious movie and you need to stop laughing and yelling at the screen. Little Women I want to see again, but I saw it with my mom and I sobbed and I loved it. But I want to see it 10 more times. Greta Gerwig, you own my soul. I want to see Knives Out. I haven't seen that yet and I'm kind of interested. What else have I seen? I haven't watched Star Wars, but I don't know if I will. I'm going to be honest, I don't really care about Star Wars. Really weird that I have the camera in this precarious position and yet it keeps falling. Really rude. Um, anyway, what else? What else? Uh, Kristen got me a film camera for Christmas, which is awesome. I've been using like disposable cameras for the last year. I used to do film photography high school and like early uni days, but I, my camera is kind of broken. It was like my mom's from the eighties and it's a little worse for wear. So I got a new one, which is really exciting. So I'm hoping to dip into more film photography. I have been so down on myself. 2019 was like kind of my lowest year in terms of like self-worth. Um, I have been in New York two and a bit years now and it's just been really hard and I haven't enjoyed myself. I don't love it here, to be perfectly honest. I've, been, I've said this before, I'll say it again. I don't love New York. But also, part of the reason I don't love it is that I have not thrived. I have really struggled here. And 2019 was like real peak that. Uh, losing my job was really hard and just like feeling worthless. It was a time, but you know, onwards and upwards. It can only go up. I just wanted to like catch up with y'all for a uh, little second here before starting a vlog. Uh, let me know how you've been, what you've been up to. Kirsten got me this mug for Christmas. It's from the Liberty Shop on Carnaby Street. And I had been kind of going back and forth between it and then she snuck away and bought it for me. Um, I'm hoping to start this guy today. This is Long Bright River by Liz Moore, who I loved. I loved her previous work. Um, or at least one of them. It's called The Unseen World, so I'm excited about this. She actually sent me a physical copy herself or like had her publicist, but I have the galley, so that's easier to read. I wanted to talk to you about reading. Hold please, I just realized I left a book in the other room. I have a lot of books that I want to read this year. A lot of them. I feel like I didn't, I did a fair amount of reading last year. I think I read 56 books, but not as many as I wanted to, so. I decided that I would vlog to document the reading I do. Not all the time, but I'm doing I'm doing a reading vlog. This is a reading vlog. I'm simultaneously recording a different video right now. It's a what I wore this week video. So if you're seeing some similarities, that's why. Same week, I'm feeling very productive this week. I kind of wanted to give you a reading update. I am kind of between a lot of things right now. I'm all over the place. I'm seeking, desperately seeking focus in my reading. Currently, I am kind of between four books, which is excessive. Usually I'm kind of reading two at a time. Three if you can't my constant reread of Harry Potter, which I don't really, I don't like log that. I literally am constantly in a state of rereading Harry Potter. I recently finished Goblet of Fire, Order of the Phoenix is on right now. It's just a thing that's a part of my life. But the reason I'm reading four books, so I was doing a Starless Sea reread because it's my favorite book ever, but I haven't really picked it up recently. So I'm kind of reading that. Not too much. Recently finished The Sweet Far Thing by Libra Bray, which was 
half a reread and half I never finished it because I got spoiled on the ending and didn't want to finish it based on what I'd gotten spoiled on. And all in all, it was like a three out of five stars. I did really like the Gemma Doyle trilogy when it first came out and I still think it is great, but I just kind of never got around to it. So glad I finished that up. Uh, I took me forever because I was listening to the audiobook and kept like going and listening to other things. So I finally buckled down. That was my first finish of the year. So what I'm currently reading, first thing out of the library, um, I have the audiobook for The Death of Miss Westway by Ruth Ware. Death of Miss Westway is um, a thriller, I guess, a mystery, uh, but it's about a girl who's kind of at the end of the line, like she's really struggling financially. She has loan sharks coming after her for a debt she already repaid. When she gets this letter about a grandmother she does not have that says like, you're entitled to some of her estate or any, something like that, she kind of just has to accept it. She has to like go with it and go meet, the, like go to the funeral of this woman who was not her grandmother but has apparently left her something. That's kind of where I'm at in the book. Who knows what happens? I, I don't like knowing too much about thrillers in general. So I have that out from the library. Next. I have been reading this for ages. I picked it up last year and then haven't gotten back into it, which is a shame because I'm really enjoying it. I just find it, it's, I mean, it's quite a dry and sad read, so I don't automatically think to pick it up all the time, but I'm going to finish it this month. It's on, it's my goal for the month, um, hopefully in the next week or so. It's The Title Zone by Sarah Moss. Um, I'm 150 pages in. This is about a girl the main character is a father of a young i think she's like 15 year old teenage girl who just falls one day she just like drops and stops breathing and they don't know why in this exceptionally courageous and unflinching novel of contemporary life sarah moss explores par parental life overwhelming fear illness and recovery um it is about the challenges of marriage it's about the nhs about academia academia, sex, gender. It kind of covers a lot of topics in a really interesting format. I really like Sarah Moss's writing. This is maybe want to pick up other stuff from her and I have. Um, I read The Ghost Wall last year and quite liked it. Anyway, I'm really into this. I want to finish this. The other thing I'm going between the audiobook and the physical book and that is Long Bright River by Liz Moore. I'm on page 109 of this. I'm going to an event tonight uh, to see her at the Strand which is why I'm like trying to read a bunch of this today and why I got the audiobook so I could try and um, get through more of it as fast as possible because I like I like reading books before I go to events if possible. Uh, usually they don't spoil books anyway but I just like doing it. I guess it's a really big take on the opioid crisis in the states and I'm really interested to read more of that. Is that all I'm reading right now? I guess those three and then kind of Harry Potter. I have a lot going on. Um, I kind of want to keep you updated, take you through my reading this week. Almost everybody in the United States knows somebody or has been touched directly by addiction. So my hope is that in telling stories about addiction that focus on the characters that are driven by place, by character, by story, it might offer uh, it might open a door for people to kind of like have natural conversations about it with people they love or with other readers or anything like that. But that would be a nice byproduct and it's not necessarily like my artistic goal as a writer, I guess. Hello, once again coming at you from my bed. I wanted to give you a bit of an update. So last night I did end up going to the Liz Moore event and it was really really good it was great to hear i love hearing people talk about their books it makes me even more excited to read it even if i'm already you know as in this case in the process of reading the book uh, i really enjoyed how she talked about how she i mean she's lived in philadelphia for 10 years which is where the book is set in like the kensington neighborhood of philadelphia she's lived like nearby for a decade and she before even writing this book she had done a lot of volunteering in the community at different like women's shelters i think that provides an authenticity to the story it's not like she went out necessarily and researched she did do obviously a lot of research and like a ride along because the main character is a cop um but i think that that authenticity can really come from experiencing 
those shelters and things like that uh, within a community as opposed to just kind of going out of your way for the sake of research but rather doing it and then being inspired. Anyway, I am now about 250 pages into the book. Fun fact, Kirsten took, we were both like in bed last night reading the same book. I have a galley and the finished copy, so she was reading it and she stayed up till three o'clock in the morning finishing it. She started it and finished it last night. She read it in like five hours. I, she's such a speedy reader, I don't understand. I could never. I would like to finish it in the next day or two. So I work in, like a couple of hours, or I have to leave for work in about an hour and a half. So let's see how much reading I get done. Uh, also, I've gotten a little bit further through The Death of Miss Westaway. It's really interesting. Um, it's moving a little slow for me, but I don't have the physical book, so I can't tell you how far along I am. I'm about like, uh, I'd say 20% in to the audiobook. So that's that. Also, sorry if I've been, my rings, this is the problem with rings that they all click a lot, but there's some ASMR for you. It's not even a pleasing noise. I don't know. This is my six mug. I love the musical. Six. Hello, hello. It is actually two o'clock in the afternoon, but you wouldn't be able to tell from the way that I look right now. I finished Long Bright River by Liz Moore. And I can't remember how detailed I was in my description of this. Basically, the main character of this book is a cop. Her sister suffers from addiction and she doesn't know where her sister is. Her sister is missing and uh, women in this neighborhood of Kensington in Philadelphia, where there are a lot of people suffering from addiction, start going missing. And there are these a bunch of rumors going around and she's trying to figure out what's going on while also navigating this, like trying to find her sister while also not trying to allude to the fact that all this is going on and problems with her job and she has a son to think about. Anyway, I had a lot of ideas as to what I thought was going to happen and I was wrong, which is, I, that doesn't happen too often with me. I feel like when I'm pretty sure about something, I'm usually right in terms of like mysteries. I watch a lot of cop dramas <laughs> like a lot of my favorite shows uh are procedurals so i sometimes think that i know everything and i didn't this time which was cool so i give this five out of five stars i thought it was really interesting really kept me on the edge of my seat um a really great book a story of hope and a story of um empathy and empathizing with other human beings and navigating the struggles of being human really and loving people regardless of the addictions and the horrible things that go on in life i guess so really really enjoyed it super recommend it um trigger warning for um i guess poor treatment of women in general but uh there there is rape and sexual assaults and kind of coercion and things like that. But um, I, I think it's it's kept kind of at an arm's distance so that you're not kind of in the middle of it as in some other books. So, um, but yeah, still important to let you know. I am going to try and get some more listening of The Death of Miss Westway today and then hopefully gonna read some title zone. Um, I have a meeting in about an hour, so I need to prepare for that. So after that, we'll get some Good reading done. Hopefully I also really need to like clean. Like I just looked over there and there's like a patch of dust. Someone needs to take care of that. It's me. I have to take care of that. Oh, I look rough. I was just on a bus. It's like 50 degrees out today and I was on a bus that probably was about 80 degrees. So I just like sweat and didn't feel good the whole time. Um, so I came home and immediately put on pajamas. But anyway. I wanted to talk about The Death of Miss Westway, which I finished today, and I didn't love it. I gave it, I'd say, like a, like a three-star book. Um, I don't know what I've just done. That looks awful. It was, I thought it was pretty good throughout, and then the ending just completely ruined it for me. I did not buy what happened in the slightest. I don't know. I just didn't care for the ending. So that was a little bit of a disappointment. It was my second Ruth Ware 
I really like the first one, which is her most recent book, The Turn of the Key. So I kind of wanted to go back and see her old stuff, though I also heard that she keeps improving every book, so maybe I shouldn't do that because I'll just be comparing them to her most recent work. I don't know. Um, let me know if there's another Ruth Ware that you think I might like. I don't know. I'm really picky about thrillers and things. I don't know, and I can't even tell you, like, what I like in them. I feel like I'm too new to it. I've probably read like 15 total, so it's all quite new. But I also started this guy, um, The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers by Maxwell King. I bought this after seeing Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, which I loved. Um, and I immediately went and bought this at the Strand like right afterwards. So I picked this up and I'm excited to keep going. I'm not very far in. I just started part two. Not too far in, but uh, that's another thing I'm currently reading. Basically all I've done the last few days is work, so. And I had an interview, I guess. But that feels just like work. In fact, it's more exhausting than work because it's emotional energy. <laughs> I have a cup of tea brewing and I want to get through some of the title zone. I really need to finish this book. I feel like I've been reading it my whole life, so really just need to get through it. I'm really enjoying it and I think that's part of the reason I'm not, I don't know, that I'm not just powering through, but I'm 150 pages in. It's about a 300 and something page book, so a little around halfway, I guess. So that's, that's the most important thing right now. I've just edited for nine hours. I edited the, most of this video. It's getting pretty long. I edited one, two, three, four and a half videos. So I haven't read it all. I'm gonna go watch Go More Girls and plan. Side note, I did a poll for what video. It was videos that I'm working on, so seeing which one people would want to see first. And it's so funny, because I feel like fashion and reading videos are some of my most requested, but they're also some of my least watched videos. And also, like, the results of this poll. Here you go, one sec. Like, look at that. So curious. Anyway, camera's flashing. See you tomorrow. I waited to film this just long enough for the radiators to turn on, which fair enough, it's currently 20 degrees outside. I'd be mad if they weren't. What was that? So anyway, forgive the loud hissing noise. I finished it. Finally, after so long of just picking through it, I finally sat down and just plowed through and it was really great. I really don't know how to explain this in a way that like sounds fun and interesting because it's really not fun. The main story is told from the perspective of a father of a 15 year old and also I think she's eight. There's, he has two daughters and his, him and his wife, his wife works as a doctor. The 15 year old just drops one day and stops breathing and they have no idea what's causing it. They're going through all these tests. She's in the hospital for a really long time. Adam, who is the main character, is a stay-at-home dad and so it talks a lot about like role reversal, traditional family values and like confronting those and kind of how he gets treated for being a stay-at-home dad. He's um, a researcher. He's writing the history of the bombing and rebuilding of the Coventry Cathedral uh, after following the Blitz. So that's like He's studying and he's he like teaches once a week, I think. But ultimately he's a stay-at-home dad for the daughters. It follows like trying to figure out what happened to the oldest daughter, um, dealing with the fear that parents face knowing that their their kids are just like one weird breathing episode away from dying and like changing their whole lives. It also flashes back to Adam's uh dad telling stories about his kind of young adulthood where he like traveled across America. It's got a lot going on in it. It also talks a lot about different like, the, the part that I didn't vibe with the most is that it kind of talks in depth about other like architecture developments and kind of goes into the history of that, which like kind of broke it up in a way that I didn't love. But other than that, really, really enjoyed this. I'd say four and a half out of five stars for me. I think the writing was really engaging. I found myself tabbing, like you can probably see, um, tabbing a lot of it. I'm gonna go back and like write down a lot of different things that really resonated with me. I super enjoyed this. That was like my fourth book of the year. Doing all right so far, it's the 20th. Feeling good about that. Um, I'm almost done with the Mr. Rogers memoir, or not memoir, sorry, biography. I'm not like loving it. I'm finding it a little long and like, 
goes into stuff that I don't necessarily care about, but overall, interesting. It's funny. I didn't grow up watching Mr. Rogers, so I watched that documentary that came out a couple years ago, and then more recently the Tom Hanks movie, and I really enjoyed them both from the outside. But growing up, actually, I found Fred Rogers like a little unsettling um, in his treatment of like his, the way he talked to children and even still I find like watching clips of him a little unsettling but I find it very interesting and like really enjoy reading about him so I don't know I, I'm sure that's like kind of divisive because I know some people like grew up hardcore Mr. Rogers fans and that's just not me but that's fine. Hello I'm in the same place again so much of this video takes place on this bed but it's just life, you know? I finished The Good Neighbor, The Life and Work of Fred Rogers by Maxwell King. And I think I talked about this in the last clip I recorded. It was entirely fine. Um, I mean, like, it was really interesting and I learned a lot about Fred, but I just feel like this specific memoir was not, like, I wasn't dying to read it, you know? Like, I wasn't as engaged as I feel like I have been in other memoirs I've read. So I don't know if there are other memoirs about Fred Rogers, but I mean, I would recommend this. There's nothing like offensive about it. I do feel like it's a really comprehensive book, but also it was not like the most engaging read ever. So I gave it like a three and a half out of five stars, you know, pretty uh, middle of the road there, but on the good side of middle of the road. So glad I read it. And I think with that, I might end the vlog here. It's already kind of long. I might start a new like reading weekly kind of vlog situation after this. TBD, if you're interested, things I'm looking forward to reading next. I have the white book by Han Kang, which I got last year and really want to read. Um, I loved Human Acts by her, so excited for the white book. Um, this is something I'm going to pick up soon, Tessa Hadley's The London Train. And also I have a galley of A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson, which is a YA kind of unputable down, unput downable thriller as addictive and twisty as Serial and Making a Murderer. Um, so this is like a YA thriller that I got an event last year and it comes out in February, so I want to read it before it comes out. So if you, if you want to hear me talk about any of these books, let me know if you want to watch another vlog like this and I can do that or give it a like, ring that notification bell. Just kidding. I mean, if you want to do it, I just always feel so fake saying things like that, even though it is a great way to know when videos by people you like have been posted. Anyway, hope you're well. Have a great rest of your week. Um, hopefully I get this out soon. Today is the 22nd and I feel like I want to post this soon so maybe I'll post it in a couple days. Cool. Bye! <laughs>